Hello. In this module, I'll be talking about the concept, process and techniques of controlling. So let's first understand the concept of controlling. We have various functions of management like planning, staffing, organizing, directing and controlling is one of the most important function of management. Basically, it does three tasks. First of all, it verifies that all the allotted tasks are being performed on time. Secondly, it ensures that activities in an organization are performed as per the plans. And thirdly, it ensures that organization's resources are being used effectively and efficiently for the achievement of predetermined goals. So, three things to take care of while we talk about controlling is the time factor, the plans or activities that are being performed in the organization and the resources being effectively used in the organization. Now, controlling should not be misunderstood as a last function of management. It is a function that brings back the management cycle back to the planning function. So it is not the last function. Now let's look at the characteristics of controlling. First characteristic of controlling is that it is a pervasive function, which means that control is embedded in each level of organizational hierarchy from top to the bottom level. Everywhere control function is required. Secondly, Control is forward-looking. That means it is related to future and because the past cannot be controlled. Thirdly, control is a continuous activity. You can't do it once or twice, but it has to be done all the time. It involves continuous review of standards and of performance and results in corrective action. Control, it is closely linked to planning because without control, all the planning will fail. Control compares actual performance with planned performance. And sixth, control minimizes cost and it saves time. Now let's look at the process of controlling. It's a circular process wherein uh, we have to first of all set standards, measure performance, compare the performance and then take corrective action. But it does not end at the corrective action. It again moves on to setting of standards. So the first step is we have to let the employees know what to expect in terms of their time, quality and quantity. So that is what a setting standards means. Secondly, we have to measure the performance where the actual performance or results are determined. The third step is comparing that performance. This is when the actual performance is compared with the standard. And fourth, we have to take corrective action, which involves making whatever actions are necessary to get things back on track. And as I said, it should be the circular motion. So all the steps will be repeated periodically until the goal is achieved. Now let's look at the controlling techniques. Now controlling techniques are of two types, the traditional techniques and the modern techniques. So the traditional techniques are personal observation, statistical reports, break-even analysis and budgetary control while the modern techniques are return on investment also known as ROI, ratio analysis, responsibility accounting, management audit, PERT and CPM and management information system. So first let's, let's look at the traditional techniques in a little detail. The first traditional technique is personal observation. As the name suggests, it enables a manager to collect first-hand information, personal information or personal observation about a person. So it basically creates a psychological pressure on the employees to perform well because now they are aware that they are being observed personally on their job. Under this technique, the manager will note the actual performance of the employee and then the manager decides whose performance is weak and how to improve it. But this is a very time-consuming exercise and cannot effectively be used in all kinds of jobs not in every case we can have a person we can take care of the personal observation next traditional technique is statistical reports now statistical uh, reports or analysis in the form of averages percentages ratios correlation etc they help in presenting useful information to managers regarding regarding the performance of the organization in various areas now they can be presented in the form of charts graphs tables and these will help the managers to read them more easily and then it will allow the to make a comparison with the previous periods and also with the benchmarks. So this is another technique statistical reports. 
The third technique is break-even analysis, which is a very important technique. Now here you can see the graph of the break-even analysis, which represents the cost and revenue lines, and the x-axis represents the volume, and the y-axis represents the cost and profit. Now the intersecting point, that is the point at which the revenue and cost lines meet, is known as a break-even point. And break-even point is that point where there is no profit and no loss to the organization. So this technique is used by managers to study the relationship between cost, volume and profits. It determines the probable profit and loss at different levels of activity. The sales volume at which there is no profit and no loss is known as break-even point. It is determined by the intersection of total revenue and total cost curves. And beyond this point, the firm will start earning profits. And below this point, it will be having losses. It is a useful technique for managers as it helps in estimating profits at different level of activities and hence helps in the control of various resources. Next traditional technique is known as budgetary control. Now what is budgetary control? It is a technique in which all operations are planned in advance in the form of budgets. We set budgets for all the activities. Then the actual results are then compared with the budgetary standards. It will tell us this comparison of uh, setting of comparing actual results with budgetary standards will tell us what necessary action is required. Now different types of budgets that can be formed are sales budget, production budget, cash budget, research and development budget, etc. Now let's look at the modern techniques. The first modern technique is return on investment also known as ROI and it is very popularly said by Frederick Smith that every time we make an investment decision at FedEx, we ask ourselves, what is the return on this investment? So you can see how important this controlling technique is. It basically measures what, whether or not the invested capital has been used effectively for generating reasonable amount of return. It can be calculated. There's a formula uh, for this. It is calculated as net income or profit divided by total investments. Now, what is the net income? It can be before and after tax income can be taken for comparison and total investment will include both the working and fixed capital invested in the business. So this is another technique, modern technique of controlling. Another modern technique is known as ratio analysis. Now, ratio analysis basically refers to the analysis of financial statements through computation of ratios. So when we study accounts, we we have a chapter on ratio analysis where we study different types of ratios so that those ratios can be used in the controlling technique some of the ratios that we study uh, in accounting is liquidity ratios which basically helps us understand the current position of the liquid funds of the business or the short-term solvency whether we will be able to fulfill the demands of our short-term uh, needs then we have the solvency ratios it determines the long-term solvency of the business the third type of ratio is the profitability ratio. It determines the profitability position of the business and turnover ratios, which will determine the effective utilization of resources. Higher the turnover will be the better utilization of resources. So these are some of the types of uh, ratios that we can compute. Liquidity ratio, we have examples would be current ratio and quick ratio. In the solvency ratio, we can have ratios like debt and equity ratio, proprietary ratio, interest coverage ratio. In profitability, we have gross profit ratio, net profit ratio, return on capital employed. And turnover ratio, inventory turnover ratio, stock turnover ratio, debtors turnover ratio. So these, all these ratios have different formulas and we can have a, an entire module on this particular topic. Next uh, modern technique is responsibility accounting. It is a system of accounting in which different types or, or different departments of an organization are set up as responsibility centers. The head of the center is responsible for achieving the target set, uh, set for his center. Now responsibility centers can again be of different types. We can have a cost center where the managers are held responsible for the cost incurred in the organization. And then we have revenue centers. The center is responsible for generating revenue. And I'll be giving an example of each one of these types of centers in an organization. The third kind of center that we can have is a profit center where the manager is responsible for both uh, revenue and cost incurred. And the fourth one is the investment center, which uh, where the center is responsible not only for profits, but also for investments. An example of cost center can be a painting department of an automobile plant, which is held for the cost in, uh, cost part of the, which involves the cost factor. 
then we can have a revenue center example can be advertising sales department of an of a mobile app developer from that particular uh, department uh, we expect revenue to be generated then we can have a profit center an example could be a company owned restaurant in a far, fast food chain and then we can have an investment center an example would be a small startup company so every kind every department can be made a responsibility center and we can set a system of accounting or a control over these centers next modern technique would be management audit now it is helpful audit basically is helpful in finding out the deficiencies in the performance of the management functions uh, when we conduct uh, audit sometimes there are problems because there are no standard techniques for uh, management audit these are mostly conducted by the chartered accountants it can be done internally and it can be done uh, through some company as well auditing firm also then uh, management audit is also not compulsory under any law now when we talk about standardized management audit we have to take care that these particular characteristics should be taken into account that management audit should be independent and fair it should be evidence based it should be transparent and accountable it should have be decentralized and delegated it should be participative and collaborative it should be continuous and objective they should be continuous and there should be objective improvements uh, done in that then it should be professionally competent and it should be legitimate so all these factors should be taken into account when we conduct any kind of management audit as a function of controlling next modern technique is pert and cpm now we can have an entire module on pert and cpm but here i have just given a basic uh, outline of this particular topic uh, so pert is basically program evaluation and review technique and cpm is critical path method they are very important network techniques and very helpful in controlling they are useful in implementing time bound pert projects uh, involving performance of a variety of complex diverse and interrelated activities so when we have a lot of activities involved and there is the projects are time bound in those cases we use pert and cpm they have they deal with time scheduling and resource allocation uh, is taken care of in these activities uh, it aims at effective execution of projects within given time schedule and structure of cost now an example of this would be uh, like this for example uh, we we draw network diagrams like this when we talk about pert and cpm so here you can see that in the first case a must finish before either b or c can start these are certain diagrams that can be drawn uh, otherwise it is very complex uh, both in the second one we can see both a and b must finish before c can start the third diagram both a and b must finish before either of c or d can start and the fourth one a must finish before b can start both a and c must finish before d can start but i'll have a new module on uh, specially dedicated to pert and cpm in the coming few weeks let's say the next modern technique is management information system now uh, this is a very important control technique and very helpful uh, to get information uh, of the organization and uh, it basically deals with the data and it's based uh, computer based and it provides all information and support which would be required for making decision making effective decision making and it gives the managers all the information and data at the right time so that appropriate corrective action may be taken in case of deviation from the standards so uh, i hope the lecture helped you and uh, you enjoyed watching it so thanks for watching please like share and subscribe thank you